Okay, so now in the today's or in this video, we um, will be focused on purely examples of um, uh, application that involve application of these sliding contact relationships. So we're um, in the realm of rigid body kinematics, describing motion of rigid bodies, but in a way where we might have multiple rigid bodies that are in contact with one another through a slider. And in that case, then they aren't rigid bodies. So here, like B, that pin B and C are not on the same rigid body, but they're related to one another through the slider. And so we just have a modified relationship from what we talked about earlier, which was uh, velocity and acceleration of rigid bodies. Uh, well, relative to, you know, to, uh, relative velocities of, um, okay, so how to relate the absolute velocities A and B here on a single rigid body, we have some extra terms we need to consider when their uh, C is, you know, related to B, where they're connected through a slider contact. This is probably the definitely the most <coughs> complicated relationship we've had so far, I think, in the class. You know, definitely rotational motion, uh, when you get to rotational, or the acceleration in these relationships, there's um, angular acceleration always uh, off, um, also being uh, considered here. So um, really the goal here is to parse through all of those details and get comfortable with it and realize it's, it's not too bad, right? If we just break it down and uh, think about each term separately, really careful with each term, um, should be able to tackle any of these types of problems, okay? So um, let's see, what do we have in this case? We have this big plate that has a slider contact where A and B are on the same bar, pinned here to the fixed you know, uh, coordinate system at, at A and C about the slider contact at B. Okay, what we want to determine is given the rotation rate of the AB bar, can we determine the rotation rate of the plate and then the velocity of B relative to the plate, okay? Okay, so we're gonna break, we're gonna do this one in two steps. The first step is uh, the, 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 the one we are now practiced at, which is noticing that AB is a rigid body. And so uh, determining the velocity of B should be able to be done from A um, using just rigid body relationships. So um, actually, and let's write this out as if it's not a rigid body and show that we converge to the rigid body relationships. Okay, so <clears throat> we have, and I, should, I shouldn't keep using the word just rigid body, it's that A and B are on the same rigid body. Like C is a part of a rigid body called the plate, and A and B are on a rigid body. It's just when you get to B and C, they're not the same, right? That's the difference. Okay, so the general relationship for these slider contacts VB equals VA plus VB relative plus omega AB crossed into RB from A. Okay, now this is this one's zero because uh, A is pinned to ground, pinned to our fixed coordinate system here, our, our primary coordinate system. And uh, this is also zero because, um, where's the tape? I'm on the tape again. That one's zero as well because uh, A and B are on the same body. Okay, so this doesn't help interpret what this term is, but it's all that it says is no matter how I move A, this a bar A, B around in space, I can move it anywhere, right? No matter what, the velocity of A with respect to B um, is, is fixed, right? Those, those translational velocities. <coughs> Because they're on the same, they're on the same uh, body, okay? All right. So no matter what, if you're if you're sitting here at a, think about it this way, right? If I'm sitting here at a, and think about the primary coordinate system is down here that is ground, okay? Uh, and then the plate is is the, uh, and we'll put a little guy up here. This would be the observer that's on the body of the plate. Well, if we think about B though, okay, um, we're an observer here at A, you know, kind of at the, the primary coordinate system. Um, we're looking up at B, no matter how I move the plate, right, A and B, it's always going to look the same. So whatever I'm moving, right, B is going to move, uh, and uh, there's no way that B can, can you know, move away or move closer to me, right? There's those, it's always that distance away and it's always in my line of sight, right? So this is zero for this case, right? So it's all we've talked about so far is how to win this is zero, not uh, how to actually determine it. That'll come in the next step. Okay, so let's actually calculate this. VB is then uh, 4K hat. That is the uh, 
value of the rotation, the angular velocity of the AB bar uh, crossed into 115 I hat coming from 80 plus 35. That is the horizontal distance to go from A to B. And then the vertical distance to go from A to B is the 60. So plus 60 J hat. Okay, K crossed into I is a J. So that's gonna be 460 J hat. I'll put that over here so we the I hat first because K crossed into J is negative I hat. So we got minus 240 I hat plus the 460 J hat. Okay, that's not uh, the solution to anything, but it's going to be an important intermediate step here. Okay, so now we know the velocity of B. Let's see, 240 in the negative uh, I hat, and then more stronger in the I hat. So right, as this rotation, as we have this rotation in AB, uh, the motion of B is sort of that way. Okay, all right, so now... Uh, now let's also um, express the VB velocity, but do this from the other fixed point, which is C. Now these are not on the same body, not on the same body. And so we need to apply our body fixed, uh, our body fixed um, reference frame which is the plate we're going to fix a reference frame to the body and ask you know how does that that reference frame rotate in space compared to the primary right which is like the one that's fixed to the ground okay so we have vb equals vc plus how b moves relative to the plate okay plus the rotation of the plate crossed into our BC. All right, well, VC is fixed. Uh, I shouldn't say fixed, pinned. There's a, you right, we have a connotation for what fixed means, it means it can't rotate. Well, it can definitely rotate, it's a pin. All right, so it's pinned, but that means its velocity is zero. Um, now, now we got these two terms. Let's interpret what these are, right? This term is going to be the horizontal, or it is horizontal only, right? The only way that B can move, the only way that B can move relative to C is horizontal, right? The whole plate can move, right? The whole plate can move, but B itself, no matter what, no matter what orientation I have, B can only slide back and forward with respect to the fixed point C here, right? So from C's rotating perspective, B can only move left and right, only in the i-hat direction. So this is horizontal only in the body fixed reference frame. Okay. Now the other term here I want to say more about is this just omega plate, right? That is with respect to the primary. Okay, the plate itself is the is the body that's that's moving, right? So it's it's the rotation rate of this other reference frame uh, combined with the the uh, um, the slider there. Okay. All right. Does this? Um, let me. Okay. Make sure we got this right. So B always moves horizontally. To the body with that little script B where the body is the plate right okay I think I've showed that but uh, maybe better to write it down completely okay so now VB we know from the previous step that's 240 uh, I hat plus 460 J hat and that then equals our relative velocity well that's what we want to find that's actually one of the um, oh, and that's, we'll write this not as a vector, but we'll write this horizontal only, right? So that's the speed of the B, where that's the I hat direction, right? And then we have omega plate in the K hat direction, because that only rotates, you know, the axle rotation is somewhere in the plane. we got planar motion here. Crossed into the position vector of B starting from C. So at this time instant, right, we have to go over 35 in the I hat direction and up 60 in the J hat direction. 
So we have 35 i hat plus 60 j hat. And right now we have two equations here um, because k hat crossed into i hat and k hat crossed into j hat are going to be different components of i hat and j hat. So let's <coughs> just write out the i hat components, right? So on the left hand side, that's negative 240 equals the relative b velocity is i hat component. And the i hat component that comes out of here is going to be k cross j gives you a negative i hat. So this will be negative 60 omega plate. And the j hat components, because we can't actually solve for anything yet, right? We have two unknowns there. I think the j hat should be able to let us solve for one of them. If not, at least set up a system of two equations for two unknowns here, right? So 460 on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, this has no, no j hat component. We only take the j hat component from here, which is k hat cross i hat is j hat. So this equals 35 omega plate. And that one we can solve. The rotation rate of the plate, the angular velocity, is uh, 460 divided by 35, which is 13.143 radian per second. All right. And, uh, and then we just plug that result into the, the relationship above. Okay, and we'll put that down here. Okay, uh, we'll put that down here. So our relative velocity, this is B's velocity relative to the plate, is going to be, uh, so when we solve for that, we'll pull that to the other side. So that's 60 times 13, 1, 4, 3, minus... 240 and we get 548.57 and the units on that are actually millimeters per second right uh, all the lengths were given in millimeters so that's a fine unit right you see how we didn't we didn't need to convert to meters because nothing else was given in terms of meters so we just stuck it we just stuck to our uh, millimeter unit throughout the entire problem okay well, also, the, the question asks for the velocity of B, so to be technically correct, we could say, like, this is, you know, we're done. But this is just the speed. Um, the actual velocity is uh, VB relative as a vector is 548.57 I hat millimeters per second. And let's do one quick check. Does that make sense? So as... A, B rotates this way, right? The plate's going to also, uh, yeah, it makes kind of sense that that's going to slide out. I mean, it looks like the, the plate also has to rotate uh, um, counterclockwise. And yep, we got a positive omega, so the direction there is correct. And we get V, B with respect to C moving to the right, all right? So as the two, the system kind of rotates this way, right? A, B rotates that way. The plate kind of rotates this way too. B, with respect to C, also moves to the right in the slider. Okay, so even though V, B moves that way, uh, let me choose a different color here. We've got, and uh, what's the relative make? Oh, this is actually quite large, 548. This is V, B relative to the fixed C. It can only move up back and forth in the slider, okay? All right, that's uh, the end of this first example here. Okay, so in this example, right, uh, fun uh, kinematics with this rigid body here and a sliding contact. Um, so we have a, a, a rolling disc with a slot in the middle that has like a block or a bar sliding down in, right? And we're not doing any kinetics here, so we're not worried about what's 
causing the motion or anything. It's just a, a motion that we're describing. And so therefore we're given a lot of information, not about the forces, but just a lot about a, the, inf uh, the motion. We're given that the disk is rotating at five radians per second in a clockwise fashion. That's actually negative in our coordinate system, right? I hat, J hat, and K hat comes out at you, so in order for it to, to be that way, it needs to go away from you, right? Mirror me again, right? Remember, mirror me, so that should be pointing um, into, the, into the board. Uh, okay, um, we're given that the radius of the disk is 1.67 feet, the current height is one foot, and uh, at this particular, as it's sliding down, how, why is it sliding down? Well, it's sliding down because we're given that the velocity of the uh, block, or the bar, with respect to the disk, is eight feet per second downward, and so is its acceleration downward. It's actually accelerating downward with gravity. It's kind of like in, in free fall right now, right? Um, although it's gonna be um, affected by the rotation of the disk. We wanna find the current acceleration, absolute acceleration of the disk, um, with respect to the ground, not with respect to the disk. But this will be helpful in getting there, right? All right, so it's nice about this, Example, yeah, it's like complicated, there's a lot going on, but not a, there's not a lot canceling out, so we need to interpret all of the terms um, very carefully, okay? So we're going to do this by analyzing what a acceleration of P is from point A, okay? Now, these are not on the same body, right? These are not on the same rigid body. This is a sliding contact. So in these sliding contact problems, a lot of times um, terms get canceled out. It's not going to be the case here, right? That's what's good about this example problem, right? Okay, so let's, let's do this. Okay, AP as a vector, absolute uh, acceleration of point P of that block is the absolute acceleration of point A plus AP relative, right? So the, the relative acceleration of point P um, two times our uh, angular velocity vector crossed into the relative velocity of point P. Alpha vector crossed into the position of A with respect to P minus omega squared R P from point A. Okay? So that's, that's just the, the sliding contact relationship for acceleration written all the way out. Now, uh, let's see, let's start putting these in here, right? So this is what we're trying to solve for, and this equals a a j hat, right? Um, because a can only be accelerating upward, and we've talked about that in the past. Um, the acceleration, right, that's given right here. Uh, that's minus 32.2 j hat, because it's straight down, so that's why it's negative. Uh, omega is negative five in the k hat direction crossed into minus 8 j hat. And that's because we're just using this information. The velocity relative to the disk is straight down, yeah? Right? Um, and then we add on 2 k hat, and that's because we have a positive counterclockwise two angular acceleration there, crossed into 2.67 j hat, right? And that's because we are currently um, 2.67 away, right? So we are a radius away, which is 1.67, plus another one foot. So 2.67 total away from point A. Uh, and that's in the positive j hat direction, right? So j, or the r vector, is going to be right there. This is r p from A. And what else do we need? And then we have minus negative 5 squared, 2.67 j hat. Not too bad, yeah? Okay, the only thing in fact missing here, the only thing that we need to know is a a. Everything else is known, right? In fact, so a p is just, once you combine all these terms, is going to be a a minus 98.95 j hat. Oh, uh, that quantity times j hat. Minus 85.34 i hat. So we get a, we get a, um, the acceleration of point A, uh, and in only the j hat direction, right? Uh, then we've we've solved it. In fact, 
let's even set ourselves up to put a final answer down here and then we'll work through the acceleration of point A up there. So AP as a vector is going to be minus 85.34 I hat. That one's not going to change. And then we're just going to need to add something on here, which is J hat. And all we need to do there is get A. And then this will be in feet per second squared. All right, so determine AA, and we have it solved. The way to do this, all right, let's use that center point. Determine, oh, that's off the screen. Determine the acceleration of A from the center of the wheel. Okay. And uh, we've actually determined this before in, I think, a previous problem. But um, let's see. This says that A, A equals, now these are on the same body, right? Um, so we do not need to do the sliding con contact. We can just do rigid body acceleration here. Same body, not some body. <laughs> same body, same rigid body, okay? Two points on the same rigid body so that we can use this expression. Minus omega squared r a from o, okay? Now, uh, well, this is a a j hat. This guy is a naught i hat. We've talked about that before. The center of the, of the motion can only move left and right. It's always going to be fixed to be a radius away from the bottom point, which is a labeled here. Um, we have a minus, uh, well, this would be a minus, you know, that's positive. So this is a two can only move horizontally, da, 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 the alpha crossed alpha is in the positive direction. Let's just write it this way. So this is alpha k hat crossed into minus r j hat. And this is minus omega squared minus r j hat. Not, that's not subtraction, that's a multiplication there. And I've gone off the screen again. Okay, and what we've done here is we've put um, minus r j hat. We're putting a minus r j hat in for a, the, the position vector starting at O to get to A is downward, right? Add that to the diagram. This one there is r. R, uh, how to get to A from O. Right? Okay. So let's see. Anything tricky here? Well, in the J hat direction, all right, the J hat components here mean that uh, A, A, in fact, we can solve for this now, is equal to A, J hat, right? Because that's the whole thing, um, is just going to be R omega squared j hat, which is equal to 41.75 j hat uh, feet per second squared. And that's actually all we need. We could just be done. That's what um, enters into here. 41.75 minus 98.95 gives us a negative value of 57.2. And that is our answer. Now, we won't leave you hanging with the other component. And what does that give us, right? It's got to give us some other piece of information. Um, this gives us what the motion, the acceleration of the central point is. And so this is, uh, let's see, A naught is going to be minus R alpha. Is that right? We've done this problem before. Um, I want to see if this confirms with what we got before. Yeah, we get minus r alpha is the motion of the center point. So you could use a, you know, look back in your notes when we work through just the sliding disk, right? So, you know, analyzing O with respect to A doesn't care that there's a slotted disk in it, right? It's just the relative motion of the contact point with the, with the, with the ground and the center point. We've already analyzed this. What's new here is the sliding contact with that bar in the middle. <coughs> so this we get is A naught I hat, which is minus r alpha. I hat, and all right, if you work through this, you get minus 3.34 I hat feet per second squared. Okay, but that's what we, that answers the question down here, right? Nothing more needed to be on that.
Great. Okay, so now in this next example, we have another um, slider contact that we're going to work through the kinematics of. Okay, we got a slider contact with this. Um, the collar, see here, can slide along this this horizontal rod, and then this bar also has you know a slider contact. So this bar AB um, um, also has a slider contact with C. Okay, so basically that affixes that C must move only horizontally, whereas in this in the plane of the bar it kind of moves. It can only move towards A and B, right? In in that uh, in that direction. Well, the camera did not like me waving my arms around there. Okay. All right. So we're imposing into the system that the uh, that the angular velocity of the A B that is not a D. It looks a little bit like a D. That the angular velocity of A B is three radians per second in the direction shown. Um, and what we want to determine is what's the relative. So it's in the problem statement, but I wrote in my own words here. We want to find the relative velocity of point P. Okay, um, and uh, we want to find the relative acceleration of point P as well. Okay, so let's start by just saying because it's a slider at P, so this collar C is a slider there, but point P slides in the slot AB, so the slider at P means that the absolute velocity of P, and we're looking for relative, but the absolute velocity is some, you know, component there only in the I hat direction. We're basically imposing that there's no J hat direction. Okay, and think here, like, um, we could put this anywhere, but here the observer would be fixed here. This is our primary reference frame, right? And now we want to have, uh, you know, something something rotating here would be some somebody on um, uh, da down here. Maybe you have a, at some point we're going to have to have an observer down here at A, and that's a part of the rotating body, right? So think of it that way. Um, <coughs> okay. So when we go to the rotating body, what is what is somebody observing here at A going to see? And they don't care how they're, they're when we talk about relative, they don't care how they're moving or rotating through space. Um, so, oh yeah, and we can add one more thing here because it's a slider. Not only is the velocity only in P, but the acceleration is limited to the i-hat direction only as well. Okay, so now let's analyze the velocity from A of point P. Okay, here, these are not on the same body. Not same rigid body. I mean, right, because they slide. P is on a, on a different, uh, you know, basically the length between A and P changes in time, right? If you swing this up, it's going to get closer to A, and then as it swings even further, it gets further away. They can't be, a, they can't be on the same body. Okay, so we have to go to the full uh, slider contact relationship. Absolute velocity at P is the absolute velocity at A plus the relative velocity at P, which is what we're looking for, looking to solve for, plus this uh, this term that's re a result of the fact that um, there's a rotating body, that we have a rotating body uh, reference frame, body fixed reference frame. Okay. So this term is zero because we're pinned at A, and that's an that is the absolute velocity of A in terms of the fixed primary reference frame here. Uh, this term here is what we're looking for, but you can definitely say that from the body fixed reference frame, point P moves, oops, is moving. Okay, let me start over there. Point P moves along the slider gap only. Okay, so from this person's observation, right, P can either move that way or that way, right? And so that would be like along, you know, uh, the direction there, right? Uh, <clears throat> now, writing this in terms of primary, the primary reference frame, okay, so let's see, we want to express this statement, express in the P, the primary base unit vectors so that we can add it to the other terms, right? We can add it to everything else that's written in terms of the primary uh, coordinate system. So we have, um, so let's do that here in this like, little space. We have, I'm gonna take like this vector, that's the assumed, you know, positive direction away from point A here. That is, at that snap, at this snapshot in time, this is the 
relative velocity of point P. Okay, uh, and this then, and we're looking to express that vector. Well, that's 60 degrees, so that means that um, our uh, V P relative in base unit vectors, I hat, J hat, we can put that on here, right? I hat, J hat, K hat. Oh, you got that. So uh, those are the uh, primary unit vectors. Okay. And so that means that the I hat component is going to be this projection. It's going to be the cosine projection of V P relative cosine of 60 I hat plus sine 60 degrees J hat. All right. Okay, so that's a little bit of side work, right, that needed to be done. And then we've done it. We've now expressed what this relative velocity is, and now this is what we're actually trying to, if we can determine this, now we have its components, right? Okay, so what this says is that our VP, which is only an i-hat component because there's a slider at P, that is now VP relative, which is what we want to solve for, and uh, that has, um, well, cosine of 60 degrees is a half. Sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2. That's in the j hat direction. Plus 3k hat, that's our omega, that's the rotation of the body, right, of the rotating body. That is, it has this slider, you know, uh, connection there. So omega of the, of the body, 3k relative to the primary reference frame. And then um, our R, okay, I guess we gotta work on, on this a little bit here. So our, our um, position vector from A to P is gonna look like this. So here we can actually put, here's A and P is there. This is our P from A. This is also 60 degrees. And we want to know what the components are here, right? Um, well, we know this is 240. And that's all we know, right? Back to the diagram, we know that that's 240. So this we actually have to relate using, um, well, we can determine this side here, which is all we really need for components. And now it's going to be related through a tangent. So the tangent of the angle is opposite over adjacent, right? So to then solve, well, let's write it out. So tangent of 60 degrees is 240 over what we're looking for, just call that x. So that means that this is uh, 240 divided by tan of 60 degrees, which is 138.564. All right. Okay, and so that's what we're going to put into here, right? Um, this goes right there. We have 0 0.1386, and that's because I'm converting these to meters. Uh, I hat plus 0 0.24 J hat when we convert to meters. All right, so I think that's everything there. Let's... Uh, Let's first do the j-hat components of this equation, of this vector equation. And the reason is because then we can actually solve for something, right? If we do the i-hat component, we'll do that second and, and determine what v, uh, vp is, okay? Do j-hat component first, zero equals root three over two. We have the root three over two portion of the relative p velocity, plus three, now which one of these contributes to the j hat, well that's going to be k cross i. So 3 times 0 0.1386. And that gives a relative velocity at p of negative 0 0.48 meter per second. Okay, so we're actually ready to solve uh, 
part A of the problem, which is that, uh, so therefore, the uh, velocity, which is what it asked for, not the uh, speed, we found the speed, the velocity is negative 0 0.48 meter per second, and then it has components, or, you know, the uh, projection here is a half, the, the breakdown of the components, let's say, a half in the i-hat direction, and root 3 over 2 in the j-hat, so then uh, vp relative is negative 0 0.24 i-hat minus 0 0.4157 j-hat all of this has units meter per second okay great now let's uh let's determine what is let's do the i i hat terms to actually get what vp is right so uh that is yeah oh, here just look at it really quick vp on the left hand side we'll have the relative velocity, which we now know, right, times a half, plus now it's going to be k crossed into j, which makes a negative i hat, so this will be a negative term, negative 3 times 0.24. So we have vp equals vp relative, that's the speed that we determine, that's right up there, negative 0.48, minus 3 times 0 0.24, and uh, plug in vp relative, we find vp is negative 0 0.96 i hat meters per second okay and that makes sense right so the relative velocity has like a um right so with as we okay so now we actually know we assumed it was up but we actually know now it's down which makes total sense right relative to the motion uh relative to um the rotating bar Right, which is going this way, our relative velocity is actually going down the gap, right? Going perfectly down the gap, while the true motion of P is purely this way. Right? Negative i hat, this one has a negative i hat and a negative j hat component along that 60 degree line. Okay, and this we're just using to just check, right? This is not part of what's being asked, but good to good to notice. Okay, now we got to move into acceleration, <coughs> right? This is where all of the the most um, the most complicated version of this analysis comes. Okay, so acceleration now. Uh, again from A, again not on the same body as P, but uh, the relationship is that because of the slider contact, right, acceleration at P, absolute acceleration at P is the absolute acceleration at A, plus the relative acceleration of P, um, you know, due to the, uh, from, from the rotating body, uh, body fixed reference frame, we have the uh, angular velocity of that, uh, the body fixed uh, reference frame, crossed into the relative velocity, plus the angular acceleration of that frame crossed into the position vector of P with respect to A, and then we have a minus omega squared RPA. Okay, that I just wrote out all the terms just to make sure it's thorough. Now we take these one by one, all right, this is what Actually, we're not looking for this. We're looking for this term. All right, that's what we're looking to solve for. This one's zero, right? Because it's pinned. Remind you of the of the system we're looking at, right? Pin at A means it can't accelerate. A is a fixed or pinned. I gotta stop saying fixed. It can definitely rotate there. Uh, the other one that's going to be zero is here, right? Alpha is zero, and that's because omega is constant, as imposed. Oh, all right, omega AB is constant at 3 rads per second. In fact, all of these, maybe we could subscript all these with AB. All of these rotational, because that is the body fixed reference frame, right? Okay, and I think everything else we know except for that, right? So AP can only as an i-hat component uh, equals AP relative 
as the, the magnitude, the scalar quantity there. And then this is also going to be broken up into a, a half i hat plus root 3 over 2 j hat to represent that uh, 60 degree motion, right? It can only accelerate along the slider and at that orientation of 60 degrees, that means the components are going to be a half and root 3 over 2 with multiplied by whatever, um, you know, we'll have the same triangle here, but it'll be the acceleration vector, the magnitude of the acceleration vector on the hypotenuse there, right? Okay, so that's the same uh, general setup. Then this term we have a 2 times a 3k hat at the constant acceleration of that uh, AB bar crossed into the velocity which we determined in part A right there. So this is going to be minus 0.24 i hat minus 0.4157 j hat and uh, Next, we have minus 3 squared, all times, and this we determined in 8 part A as well. Okay, see if we can sneak this in here. 0.1386 i hat plus 0.24 j hat. All right, and uh, if we look at this, right, what, all we need to do is solve for this guy. Right, and uh, might as well just do the j-hat components so we don't have to worry about including AP, right? So if we just analyze the j-hat components, we get 0 equals uh, root 3 over 2 relative, so scalar quantity, relative acceleration, minus 2 times 3. Now, which one of these is a, uh, a j-hat component? That's the k cross i, and it's negative, right? Because k cross i is positive j-hat, but there's a negative there. So we have 0 0.24, and then j hat component over here is, well, 3 squared is 9, and then uh, 0.24. All right, so therefore our relative acceleration has a magnitude of 4.157 meter per second. Therefore, now we're into part B, our acceleration vector relative, you know, for P relative uh, to the rotating bar AB is that's the magnitude we found and then it has a one half I hat plus root three over two J hat because it must follow, um, you know, the orientation of the AB bar. It can only move or accelerate in that dimension. So finally, our final answer is 2.0785 I hat plus 3.60 j-hat. All right. And you know, it looks incomplete, so I'll just make a statement about it. We actually won't work through it, right? You could then use this to then solve for AP, right? Which we know is AP i-hat. So this, uh, by looking at the, the components in the i-hat direction, you'd be actually be able to solve for that guy, now that we know what that is, right? All right. Okay, so this is the last um, sliding contact kinematics um, example I have here, and I'm giving extra examples for this uh, more complicated concept. Uh, I find that this is always a little bit tricky to like work or wrap your head around. Um, so we have is a gear that's connected through the sliding contact at its center to um, um, a rotating bar, and um, let's see what, the, oh, they call it a rotating arm, and then it, that's connected to a rack here on the bottom, right? So you could, this could be used to, to move the rack, um, but it, what we're actually doing here is um, using the rotation to slide the gear over, right? So we're given that um, the rotation of AB, the rotation here of AB is 10 radians per second, and when we want to determine what uh, the what omega gear is right? So find uh, omega and alpha gear right? And it's actually oh, it's just angular acceleration. So find alpha of the gear. Okay, and as always, let's put our coordinates in here. This is the primary coordinates. Actually, we're putting the base vectors for our coordinate system, and then k comes out at us. All right, and that would be the fixed uh, down here at the ground, right? The fixed 
observer P primary and uh, maybe the body would be somebody on the actual bar who's rotating right an observer that's there this is our body that's rotating okay now let's see um, now in terms of all of the you know we just you know in the previous example we worked through how these relative motions work right so when we're talking one thing we're gonna have is the relative motion of G with respect to the to the you know um, the uh, sliding contact that's in between so that's bar a B here so this right here is going to be our relative velocity of G with respect to um, you know relative to the <coughs> to the to the body that's rotating okay and that's gonna um, that will show up here pretty quick here so we want I wanted to add that into the the picture here before we get going okay so we got a, we got a, a lot a lot to get to to apply our equations to get here uh, to the acceleration uh, angular acceleration of the gear due to this constant um, angular uh, uh, velocity of the bar so we'll start here with looking at what the absolute velocity is using point C um, and now there's no C right so what am I talking about there right what I'm talking about we're gonna add a point there which is C and see if we can relate relate this right so this is just a rolling a rolling wheel like we like we've done before right those are the same body we've already analyzed this but remind you right this says the absolute velocity of G is the absolute velocity of C plus any rotation we have in the gear crossed into R G C right so the the position vector of G with respect to C well as with any wheel or any gear like here we have no slip so there's no velocity there and then we're imposing that v G can only move horizontally because it's the center of the gear right G moves horizontally Uh, only moves. Where did my e, my V go? G moves horizontally only. Great. So then we can say that the relationship we get out of here is V G in the I hat direction, imposing that we have. And I'm going to simplify omega gear to just omega G in the K hat direction, crossed into. Well, the <coughs> position vector of G with C, that's just straight up a radius R. So this is R J hat. And then we get that K crossed into J, K crossed into J, that's minus I hat. So we got minus R omega G I hat. All right, so this didn't really, you know, we haven't solved anything, but this is gonna be an important relationship. I guess I boxed it like it was the final answer. That's, my, that's what I like to do, but it's so important. Uh, we'll come back to this. So I'll differentiate it by putting like, now oh, it even looks more important, doesn't it? Okay. So maybe this is like, we're just, we're just trying to relate different points, seeing what we can do. You know, we're comfortable with the rotating wheel, the rotating gear, because we've done that before. It's not different bodies. So let's like start with something that, um, you know, will help us build a relationship that we'll get to later. I mean, if you think about it, right, um, this should help us later on to determine how omega, you know, G is rotating uh, with if we can determine another relationship for the translational velocity, or the absolute velocity of, of point G, okay? So let's do this from another point. What is the velocity of G from A? Because we have a lot of information about A, what I mean by that is it's fixed. So that's going to be, we're looking for points where there's lots of information. So pinned locations like this are going to be um, a good place to start. So this is not the same body. Okay. So since they're not the same body. Um, okay. Uh, we have VG. Oh, and by the way, uh, theta is imposed in the problem statement as 60 degrees, but it actually turns out that I'm not even sure. Yeah, no, I think, it, yeah. Okay, so that's that's one thing. It's not in the diagram, but we do have in the problem statement. It says 60 degrees. Okay. So our velocity at uh, the absolute velocity of G, but now written in terms of, you know, from the A position, these now we have, these are connected through a slider, right? A slider connection. So this is VA plus VG relative 
plus the rotation of the body that's rotating, which is our AB bar, right? Rotation, that's the rotation compared to the fixed coordinate system P here, or the, uh, the primary coordinate system, the primary reference frame, crossed into R, G from A. Okay, so we have V, G, I hat, again, posing that it can only move in the horizontal, again, from the primary coordinate system. This equal, oh, and this is why we chose A as the important location to do our analysis from, because this is pinned. So that's zero. Then we have the relative G velocity or speed here. Um, and then the components now of this, well, let's be careful. Um, <coughs> where is our, um, let's see here. This is actually going to be similar to what we had before. So now we have, let's write this out. I mean, similar, I, I mean, we just did an example problem where we did something very similar, okay? So now, so if this is, I think in the problem, yeah, so that is 60 degrees, so this is then, so in the problem statement, this is 60 degrees, so we have 30 degrees there, this is VG relative, and so, um, the, like the vector, and so its components are going to be, um, you know, cosine and, oh, uh, and the cosine and sine components. Let's actually do this through looking at the, um, how this relates to, well, no, this is good, right? We can just go to the components now, right? So this will be the cosine of, of 30 degrees. Cosine of 30 degrees is um, root 3 over 2. I hat plus one half J hat. Sorry, I'm slowing down a little bit because I have a mistake in my notes and I was trying to figure out where it was on the fly here. This is the one thing that's weird about these videos is um, if there's ever a mistake, you know, I could edit them out. But um, I don't like to do that all the time because um, I'd like you to know that we all make mistakes here, right? So, uh, okay. So that's accurate, right? So this is the cosine of 30 degrees, that's a sine of 30 degrees, and I'm happy with this. The mistake I had was I had written 60 degrees there, but that was because, uh, I, I don't know, I guess my analysis wasn't wrong, but I just labeled my diagram wrong. I think it's right. Okay, <clears throat> plus, now we have omega AB, that is imposed, uh, or I'm sorry, we don't actually know what that is, that's not a known quantity uh, in the k hat direction crossed into, now what is RGA, right? Well, we have a nice similar triangle here that we can make to the one we've already done, which is now this distance here, but well, we don't know what that is, but that's what we're looking for, right? That's the distance we want. Um, that's, like, here is that RGA, right? As a, maybe a vector, you'd think of it, right? Because this is sitting down here at A, this is up here at G, and we know that we go over, we don't know how much we go over, but you know we go 2R up, and that it's 60 degree, uh, 30 degrees, right? So this is 30 degrees, and this over here is 2R, okay? And what that tells us, right, is then, well, if that's 2R, then this is, um, because these are similar triangles, so, yeah, this was root 3 over 2 and a half. This must be root 3 over 2 times 2r. Two, 2 root 3 over, uh, 2 root 3 times r, right? Okay, similar triangles, work through that, work through that 30 degree, uh, 30, 60, 90 triangle, convince yourself of it. So now we've got our position vector here is 2r root 3i hat plus j hat. All right. All right, now as always, we got two equations, even though it looks just like one because it's a vector equation. So we have the two different components. If we just take the j hat direction here, there's nothing on the left-hand side, which is probably the good one to always start with because you can usually solve for something then. So zero equals the relative g velocity over two, that's that term, plus now the k cross i gives us a j hat, so it's plus omega a b times 2 root 3 r. 
Okay, and this is, you know, just a relationship, but we're hoping, like, some of these things cancel later on. You see how we're not given quantities for what R is? Turns out it's going to cancel here. Okay, so VG, uh, VG relative is going to be a negative quantity. Uh, I'll just pull that over. So it'll be 4 root 3 R omega AB. Okay, great. And then the I hat components here. This is going to be VG. Okay, VG. Uh, the I hat component here is root 3 over 2 VG relative. Minus, now why minus? We have a k cross j is the other term. That gives you a minus i hat. So minus omega a b times 2r. And then we can solve for what vg is. vg is uh, minus root 3 over 2 times, plugging in what, what we got up here now, uh, 4 root 3 r omega a b and the negative came from there and then we subtract off 2 r minus 2 r omega a b and so we can combine these right look root 3 times root 3 that is 3 uh, a 4 over 2 is a factor of 2 so 2 times 3 is 6 we got a negative 6 of these and we got another negative 2 of those vg is then negative 8 r omega a b Okay, great. Okay, so look, right? We got, we did get, right? We got, we got a relate. We now know. Well, at least we got a relationship for what VG is. Now we should be able to use what we had up here to uh, to make us, you know, to, to do something with that, right? Also, um, <coughs> yeah, I mean, actually, that's that's a, that's a nice statement we can make right now. Like, look, look at the relationship for what VG that we got from analyzing just the gear with point C. That just is going to equal minus r omega g, right? That's that's the rotation rate of the gear. Down here, this is the rotation rate of the bar a b, with the slider in it, with the gap in it. All right. So from this, we can we can now say, when we combine these two things, that the rotation rate of the gear is eight times the rotation rate of the bar with the gap. Okay. Again, none of these are final answers. We're looking for the angular acceleration of the gear, but in terms of the angular velocity, that's really helpful, right? Right. So it says that just based on the geometry, um, with the rotation of the bar going this way, the gear is going to be rotating eight times faster in terms of its angular velocity. <coughs> okay. So we still have a bit of. Uh, this is all helpful to relate the velocities. Now we need to relate the accelerations. Okay. So we're only halfway done and in fact we're less than halfway done because accelerations are always more difficult and a little bit more complex so we're going to use these results but we got to do the you know, follow the same procedures but do it with the accelerations so the first thing we do is analyze the acceleration at g from position a so we're actually doing it back we're doing it backwards here we're going to do a first um, and here we have to write the entire form out absolute acceleration at g is the absolute acceleration at a we might as well just cross it out now since we know this is pinned okay plus the acceleration maybe as i write this out i'll have the diagram right above it if i can fit it all in yeah i think so okay plus the acceleration of g relative uh, to the rotating reference frame plus 2 omega a b that's the rotating reference frame right there crossed into the apps uh, the relative g velocity relative to the rotating reference frame plus the acceleration of the rotating reference frame crossed into the position relative position of g with a here's another that's constant or that's zero i mean and that's because omega a b is constant Okay, so the rotation rate of our reference frame, of our body fixed reference frame, is uh, is not zero, but it's 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 also constant. So at least we have some help, you know, helping else out there. Uh, here's the rotation rate or the angular velocity of the rotating reference frame. We square that magnitude and multiply it by the position, the relative position of g with a. Okay, so two of the terms canceled out, and I just canceled them out along the way. All right. 
So now, now let's see here. We've got, um, yeah. Let's let's just break these up, right? Let's just break these out. We know that G only has a horizontal component, so that's A G I hat. Um, this we've already determined. It's I mean it's it's again right. If this is the velocity is always relative, has this root three over two and a one half, you know, following this triangle, then the same triangle is going to be true for the acceleration, right? It's limited relative to the bar to only be moving uh, there. And with the sixty degree angle right now. Um, we can actually get the exact relationship um, in the i, j, k coordinates of the primary coordinate system. All right, so this is root 3 over 2 i hat plus 1 half j hat plus 2 omega a, b, which we actually know now, or at least we, um, or no, that's something imposed. We, we assume it's known um, in, uh, in the, we, we assume it's been given to us. We have omega a b um, k hat crossed into okay now here we're keeping things all general four root three times the r radius of the gear omega a b that came from um, the component that we found from our relative velocity right of g that's the factor and then this has components uh, root three over to i hat plus a half j hat, just like the acceleration does, right? And then we'll subtract off this term omega a b squared, and then the position vector we found out in part a is 2r root 3 i hat plus j hat, right? So we already worked through, we already determined this, we already determined that in part a. The new part here is we had to like, okay, well that's also has the same components, but uh, the magnitude here, right, or the same direction, basically, right? The direction is set for both the velocity and acceleration relative to the rotating reference frame of that, that point that's not on that, you know, rotating reference frame. All right, so let's take the j-hat direction components, which is a smart choice because there's nothing on the left-hand side. So we say 0 equals a g relative over 2 minus, right, that's this term. Uh, the next one is going to be k cross i. And let's see, that is k cross i is positive j hat, but there's a negative in there. So we've got negative uh, r omega a b squared. There's two of them in there. And then there's a 2. There's a, well, let's write these all out. A 2, a 4, a root 3 and uh, a, another root 3 over 2. Okay, that's all the terms that are in front, that's all the terms multiplying the i hat, k, k cross i gives us j. Uh, and then we take the j component down here, which is minus r omega a b squared 2, and just a 2. All right, and this, what this allows us to do is solve, or at least get a relationship for a g relative. A G relative equals two. Okay, and we're just going to combine all these. Uh, let's look here. The two is going to be. So what we're going to do is pull the everything else to the other side. So everything's going to be positive here, and then we're going to whatever we get over there, we're going to multiply it by two. Both of these terms have an R omega A B squared on them, and then this term is well, the two and the two cancel. Root three squared is just three. Three times four is twelve. And um, plus this 2. And that's it, right? So then we have 12 times 2 is 14 times 2 is 28 radius omega a b squared. Right, this is a unique, unique problem from the other ones in that we have to keep a lot of variables as we do our analysis here. Okay, that'll be helpful so that when we go into the i hat component, Right, the i hat component of this one, right? So a g equals. Now we can actually plug it in. Twenty eight r omega a b squared, and we have a root three over two to get to the i hat component. Uh, 
for this one, right, this, this more complicated term, this is going to be k hat crossed into j hat, which gives us negative i hat, but we got another negative in there, so this is positive. Okay, so we have a two, uh, we have a half there, and then everything in between, which is r, uh, well, four root three, r omega a b squared. Okay, and then in this last term, this is just uh, two root three, r omega a b squared and uh right all of these terms have r omega a b squared which they should all have the same units if we're adding them together so that's a good check make sure there's not like one with an extra r in it or something uh acceleration of g is then 28 um or no uh sorry they all have R, so we're just asking what are they. So here, let's see, this is, oh, they all have a root three in them too, right? You see that? They all have share R omega AB squared and a root three, a root three, and a root three. So this is 28 over two, that's 14. We have a, the two but divided by two cancels, so we have four more here. That's a 14 plus four is uh, 18, and then we subtract two off to give us 16. So uh, AG is 16 root three R omega AB squared. Still not done. Okay, so the last step then, all right, all of that was well, here, here's how we started the problem, right? We started by analyzing what, how g is moving from c in its velocity. And we got a relationship. We then said, how is g moving in its velocity from a? Right? And through the slider contact, that relationship was more complicated, right? And we, we determined everything from that. In fact, we turned, determined the relationship between the rotation rate of the gear to the rotation rate of the bar, the arm. Okay, then we said, okay, well now let's do the same thing with acceleration. How is AG accelerating with respect to A um, in the arm? And, uh, and now we're gonna do the, the last step here and we got like this relationship, um, but we don't have the, what we wanna get to is this quantity here, right? To do that, we can then take the relationship we got for the acceleration here and that'll help us be able to determine the acceleration of the gear as we compare the accelerations of these two points. So remember, this is a point where, C is a point where uh, the motion is going straight down and straight back up. So right at this point, the acceleration is straight up. C accelerates directly upward in the J hat direction. Okay. So the last step is what is the acceleration of G from point C? and uh, we'll write everything out. Uh, but here we don't actually have to, these are the same body, right? So we don't need to consider a slider here. This is AG equals AC plus, and AC is um, vertical only. That's the one that I was just mentioning. Okay, so that'll be the well, how we impose something there. Uh, plus the angular acceleration of the gear, that's what we're looking to solve for, crossed into the relative position of g with respect to c, minus the angular velocity of the gear squared time, you know, in the direction of uh, that relative position. Okay, so then we have, uh, this is going to be a c j hat only. g can only accelerate in the horizontal, because it is the center of the gear, okay? plus what we're looking to solve for, which is that guy, k hat, crossed into r j hat, right? The relative position to go from the bottom of the gear to the center of the gear is straight up in the j hat direction, a radius r away. And then we already determined that this gear is eight. We're trying to write everything in terms of the known quantity or the specified quantity, omega a b. That's the rotation rate or the angular velocity of the arm. This is then squared times this r j hat for that relative position vector. Okay, if we just analyze the i hat, um, if we just analyze the i hat components here, we can write this as a g 
equals, what is an i hat? Well, not that, not that. This k cross j is minus i hat. So this is minus alpha gear r. And, uh, and then we know that this guy is given right up there, right? We determine that from our analysis comparing the acceleration of g with respect to a, right? From, from, a, from the point a, that pinned location on the arm, a, a, b. So we can then solve for alpha gear, which is this quantity, which is 16 root 3 r uh, omega a, b squared. Uh, we'll take the negative from the other side and then divide by r. The r's cancel, and look at that, right? It didn't matter what the radius was to answer the question that was posed to us. The acceleration of the gear is minus 16 root 3 omega a b squared. Okay, and we and I added to the problem that like if it was if it was uh, too you know too difficult to keep an uh, an omega value here, we could have just plugged in ten a long time ago. But it's actually not in the problem statement ever that it's actually a given quantity. But if it was like ten radians per second, all right, then we could actually like plug in a number and determine that. Right, that might be have made this a little bit easier, right? Or you could assume a value for r. Well, it shouldn't have affected your final answer because it cancels out in the end, right? R could the the r value of the radius of the gear could literally be anything, and you should get the same answer. Uh, if you did, if you do plug in 10 here, alpha gear turns out to be 2,000, so it's a big number, 2771.3 radians per second squared. And I'll put that in quotes because it's actually just specific to the assumed quantity I had. Okay, so that wraps up this. Wraps up. This is a complicated. Uh, it's a complicated section of the course. It's a complicated um, analysis to be doing with these slider contacts. And uh, these problems can get very long. I mean, this was two sheets, right? And that's why I did extra problems here. Uh, I'm not sure how long this video is going to be, but I bet it's going to be one of the longer ones. And this last problem is going to be a big chunk of it. But I do want to just make a note here at the end um, that you've studied this before, OK? All we have here, right, if we take back our original diagram, is you have this system where right, this is rolling, actually, sorry, this bar is going this way, right? Where uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna take A to G and to some fictitious point down here and make a big triangle out of it. And how I'm gonna analyze this is related rates back from like calculus one, I think it is. I don't really remember where it's taught, but um, the angle we have is there, that's theta, so the angle there is theta. Um, this distance we have here is is not known, and it's, it's really a function of time, right? But that is always fixed to 2r, right? No matter what, what we do with the gear, and this trudges this way, right? That's always 2r higher than it, and this is at this time shot, we have a 60 degree angle there, okay? Well, keeping theta completely general, right, we can relate x to r with the tangent. And, um, you know, what, 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 we, what we can do with this is determine through related rates what the acceleration. We can just jump to, we can basically jump to this quantity really quickly without all of the other analysis, right? So this is something we've studied. I mean, I'm glad we're doing it with the dynamic quantities, you know, the, our dynamics analysis here with the, um, the slider contacts is a really good practice for this complicated uh, calculation. But if we just think of this as like a pure related rates, you know, calculus problem, I think it's even easier to see here, right? So that's, that's definitely a relationship for this triangle. We then solve for x, which is, you know, the horizontal position um, from a put here, this is A and this is G, written generally. All right, so X is then 2R tangent theta. Well, R isn't gonna change in time. The only thing that changes as we rotate the bar, all right, as we rotate this thing is, uh, is theta, and then X changes, right, so the, on the two sides. So we can take a time derivative of X, and that becomes, now this is where the, the trig gets a little bit complicated, but the derivative of a tangent is secant squared, but we got to do a chain rule here, right? So then that's the time derivative of theta. Um, 
but the time derivative of theta is omega. And that is a constant, right? Assumed uh, that's omega AB, but I'll just represent it as omega here, right? So then we do another time derivative, and it's not going to be too bad. So we're going to take the time derivative of this. Everything out here is constant, right? And that's just for this problem. Right? Omega could be a function of time, but we're imposing that it's a constant. So that is our constant, 2r omega. Now we have to take the time we have to take the time derivative of secant squared theta. It'll be another chain rule here. You might need to remember what the derivative of secant squared there is, but it turns out to be 2 secant squared tangent of theta. And then a chain rule again, theta dot. Okay, so this is acceleration of g, right? Because g can only move horizontally. So as this, you know, as uh, the horizontal difference between a and g changes in time and its second derivative, you know, the rate of change in time, um, <coughs> then, then uh, that really is the acceleration of g, right? So x x's x's second derivative in time is the acceleration of g that's what i'm saying here right okay and it turns out right that's another omega so this is 4 r omega squared secant squared theta tangent theta and when you plug in theta equals 60 degrees we find a g equals 16 root 3 r omega squared, right? And that's because secant, uh, secant of 60 degrees uh, is 1 over the cosine of 60 degrees, which cosine of 60 degrees is a half, so this turns out to be 2. 1 over half is 2. And then the tangent of 60 degrees is sine of 60 degrees over cosine of 60 degrees, which is root 3 over 2 divided by 1 over 2, or root 3, right? So you plug in uh, 2 squared is 4, that's how you get the 16, and then the tangent of 60 degrees is the root 3. And so this would have been a way to quickly get to, oops, sorry, I'm probably off the screen, to quickly get to that result with basically out without the two pages of note, well, it's a page and a half of notes for me before this, right? So, you know, th these dynamics, are, and then and then you just follow this up with um, knowing that the acceleration of a center, which we determined back when we were looking at just the wheels, right? This, then it's not a slider problem, right? It's a related rates problem, and then it's just a rolling wheel problem. If you know the acceleration of the center, well, the acceleration of the center we determined is just the radius times the angular acceleration. So you just take that and divide by the radius r, and you got the final answer, right? I guess knowing that it's negative, you need to interpret the directions there. In fact, that could come through this analysis here. But okay, you know, this is definitely not needed here, right? You know, if you if you never get to here, no problem, right? Let's leave it a dynamics problem. But uh, definitely rethinking this in terms of the geometry and the geometry of the motion, um, you know. This slider context is nothing beyond just our related rates from calculus. Okay.